How do you bring it all together and translate your ideas into income? In today's final segment of my conversation with Dr. Ethan Siegel, he gives his thoughts on that question. Hi, this is Karma Spence, the Own Your Awesome Mentor. And I'm going to keep this short because today's video is a little longer than usual because what Dr. Siegel has to share is juicy and there was no way for me to logically cut it into two. What kind of advice would you have for people who want to start turning their hobbies and interests and passions into some form of income, whether it be a book or something else? You know, I think that's a really good question. And it's a question that I think is different. It has a different answer depending on what field you're in. Mm -hmm. The first step, I think, is if you want to be successful at something, you need some way to establish that you are an expert, that you are someone to trust in this space, whether that means you're a thought leader, whether that means you have an advanced degree, whether that means you have a platform where you speak and you communicate and people listen, people know you have something valuable to offer. Actually having that expert level knowledge is key to that. Passion will get you very far, but applied passion is what's going to get you to that level of expertise that you need to communicate with a more general audience, to communicate that you have something of value to offer. Otherwise, that's the difference between someone who's a passionate charlatan versus someone who has this passion in a valid way. And so I would say like the first step beyond having that passion is make sure you have something of value to offer, something of legitimate value. And Sometimes what that means is you need to go away and you need to fill in your weak spots and you need to do work on yourself. If you were going to write this Star Trek book, you might have to say, you know, I wasn't a fan, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to watch Enterprise because I know I need to know about this. And you may not watch all of Enterprise. You may go back and watch some of the movies you missed and you may still say, nope. I can't bring myself to watch Star <laughs> Trek five. It's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. so, so sorry, Bill. <laughs> um, Why but, does God need a spaceship? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially, by the way, because in Next Generation, you'll remember they encountered aliens that didn't need a spaceship. They encountered aliens where the alien was the spaceship. Exactly. Um, Exactly. So anyway, that's me digressing a bit. (laughs) So I would say that's definitely a key point is you want to have that passion. You want to have that expert knowledge. And then I think the next step, that's where things really vary. Who are you going to have as your ally? It's very difficult Mm. to do this in a vacuum. You can start in a vacuum. You can start as a one woman or a one man operation doing whatever it is you're super passionate about. But at some point, you're going to get more traction through collaboration, through networking. So for this book, a big step for me was working with my publisher, which was Quarto, because they were very interested in putting together something for the 50th anniversary of Star Trek, the 30th anniversary of Star Trek, the next generation, the emergence of the new series, Star Trek Discovery. But working with them, we got the license rights from CBS Studios and Paramount Pictures to use the official photographs and stills from the series and from the movies. That's a really big value add to me that I'm not just a scientist talking about the technologies from Star Trek from tricorders to warp drive. I'm someone who's doing this with the expertise with the blessing of CBS and Paramount, where now you don't just have this book with this interesting scientifically accurate content in there, but you also have this story where you open it up and you have this visually stunning book that has, you know, over a hundred images from all the different various Star Trek series and movies. And I would figure that the reason why you were able to get that relationship with the publisher was because you built a platform probably with through your blog. The blog was definitely a big part of it. You know, I think like you said, I've been doing it since 2008 and I've won a number of awards for it. In 2010, I was named the science blog of the decade by the (laughs) Institute of Physics. Wow. Which is pretty good. Like they're a big deal. I've been invited to speak 
at conferences on this all over the country and, and even all over the world. In fact, next month I'm headed off to Spain to speak there. And this is something where you build up your own personal reputation. In some industries, they call this building your own brand, mm -hmm. where you as the expert in your own area of expertise carry some sort of clout where your voice you're speaking for not just yourself but for a section of your larger field so my background as an academic is i'm a theoretical astrophysicist and i specialize in cosmology which is the big bang dark matter dark energy the origins of the universe the fate of the universe and the large-scale structure of how everything forms how we went from the big bang to the rich tapestry of stars and galaxies and cosmic voids and where that's all headed in the future and so that's something i think people have an inherent curiosity about and i think through what i've been able to do which is learning how to talk to people about these complex concepts without dumbing it down without making someone feel like they're missing out on the details. That's been an incredible skill for me to develop. And I will encourage the people out there who say, oh, I'm not good at that. You can get good at anything you want if you're willing to put the work in. I was not always very good at theoretical astrophysics, and I was not as good at writing or speaking or communicating as I was at the astrophysics. But now the amalgamation of these things that, you know, maybe I had some natural talent for it, but also that I worked hard at and I practiced, that's how I got to have that thing of value that I can offer. And I think that's true for anyone. You don't get to be a good swimmer by watching other people people swim. You don't get to be a good painter by watching other people paint. You don't get to be a good pianist by watching other people play the piano. That can be a small part of it, but you get better at things by doing them. You get better at things by working on them yourself, by struggling, by putting in the effort, by evaluating how you did, and by moving forward and learning the valuable lessons from it. And I think that's as true in writing in communicating, in speaking, in science, as it is in absolutely any endeavor. Exactly. So is there anything I haven't asked you that you want to share? You know, I think the big thing that I don't want to leave anyone with the impression that it's just like you become the expert in your thing and you do your best to talk about it or you do your best to bring it to fruition or bring it to a general audience and it's all going to work out. There are so many different steps that are part of success that people don't realize are part of success. Mm -hmm. And the biggest one that I think goes in there is kindness. I think people don't really have an appreciation and I know not everyone does it this way, but there are going to be so many people that you'll encounter who are trying to do similar things to what you're trying to do. There are a lot of other science writers out there. There are a lot of other scientists who are writing popular accounts of their work or of other work. There are a lot of Star Trek fans out there. There are a lot of Star Trek authors out there. I am not unique in any of these regards, but what I've discovered is people around you who are trying to lift themselves up, to lift their profile up, to lift general knowledge about this thing they're passionate about up. If I lift them up and they lift me up, we all rise higher. That's beautiful. And that's totally one of my missions. <laughs> it's totally one of my <laughs> missions. The thing I say often a lot is, okay, you may have five people who are talking about the same general topic, but mm -hmm. they're talking about it from their own perspective, which is unique. There's only one Ethan Siegel. <laughs> As many would say, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so you are going to bring to the table to this idea something that's uniquely yours. In your blog, which is a science blog, Mm -hmm. Have you used Star Trek as a, an analogy or brought that into that blog as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So one of the wonderful ways that you can bring this together, and I've done this not just for Star Trek, but for Star Wars as well, is there are all sorts of scientific concepts that people are curious about, that they see that, and their instinct may be to say, 
Is that possible? How is this possible? Could the Death Star blow up the planet in Star Wars? Is warp drive possible? Could a transporter ever work? What would it need to take in order to move something as massive as a starship and accelerate it at the speeds we see in Star Trek? And these are fascinating questions that science has answers to. Right. Like we can say, yes, it is possible. Yes, here's what it would take. Yes, here's exactly how you do it. And sometimes it's, well, we don't know if this is possible, but if we wanted to make it come true, here's what it would take. Here's what we would need to make it happen. So I do, I think there's this real potential overlap. And now, you know, my blog Starts With a Bang has been on the Forbes network for a few years now. And because of what I had done, Forbes has now agreed that I can be their official episode reviewer for Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> awesome. So this is really a great example of your passion for one thing leading to you becoming successful with your passion for something that's related but quite distinct. Right. So if someone wants to like find you on the web, where's the best place to go? You know, the easiest place to find me on the web is I'm on Twitter. I'm at Starts With a Bang. I'm on Facebook. You can follow my page, Starts With a Bang, or you could just look for me, Ethan Siegel. And I'm on Tumblr at Starts With a Bang. I have my blog at Forbes, which is Forbes.com slash sites slash starts with a bang. And so those are the best places to find me. If you're really just looking for me, if you Google Ethan Siegel, I'm like nine out of the 10 results on the first page. I even, I feel like I've made it because as of this year, it was pointed out to me, I have a Wikipedia page. So I feel <laughs> awesome. like I made it on the internet. Yes, you have. Well, thank <laughs> you so much for sharing your obvious passion with us today. Well, thank you for having me, Karma. It's been a pleasure to talk with you and it's been a pleasure to if I can help inspire people to follow their passion, to follow their dreams, and to put in the work to make their ambitions a reality, then that's a good day. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed not only this video, but the three-part series. The links are below if you want to catch the first two versions, please. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up on YouTube and let me know in a comment below. I want the weekday wisdom to be something that you value and look forward to watching. If you know someone who you think would be a good interview for the ideas to income segment, let me know. I am looking for really juicy guests. And remember this, don't box yourself in. Spread your wings and fly because you, yes, you are capable of more than you know.